everyone. My name is Vernisha Jones and I am the president of the West Garfield Park Youth Council. And we believe that we are the solution to the issues in our community. Our theme is nothing with us, without us. The West Garfield Park Youth Council is located on the west side of Chicago within the West Garfield Park community. Again, everyone, my name is Vernisha Jones and I am the president of the West Garfield Park Youth Council. The West Garfield Park Youth Council is comprised of youth from all around our community whose focus and concern is youth leadership and voice within the community to reduce senseless violence and illegal substance use. We invite people from all over, especially young people, to come in and see what we're all about. Our show will be scheduled every Thursday at 7 p.m. Again, that is every Thursday at 7 p.m. Our show can also be viewed online at www.cantv.org backslash live. Again, that is www.cantv.org backslash live. Well, everyone, I would like to introduce my guests this evening, Alicia Rogers and Felisa Dawson. Mm -hmm. Did I say I'm right? Felisa, but it's Felisa okay. Dawson. <laughs> I've been practicing trying to get them right, but yes. So them, these are my two um, guests tonight from the Austin Youth Congress Leaders. Thank you guys for being a guest on tonight's show. Again, everyone, I'm Bernice Johnson. I'm the president of the West Garfield Park Youth Council, and you are watching a live interactive call-in program brought to you by Can TV 21. During the next 25 minutes, we are going to discuss our topic of young people making a difference and becoming future change agents. So today's topic is young people making a difference and becoming future change agents. What do you guys think about this topic? Um, I really what like what's the first thing that comes to mind when, when just I, progression? Like okay. it's good to like hear that people actually are caring about like the youth that's in the area because like it was at a time where we felt as if like our voices wasn't heard. wasn't heard, and yeah. so it's good to have things molded for us because we are the next generation and the the future of society, and so it's really nice to have these you know topics come about. So okay. You got anything? You, um, yeah, I agree with what she said because as a youth myself, it's like it feel like we're we we are not heard as mm -hmm. much and it's like we really need you guys to like enforce us to use our voice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna get into the conversation. I you guys see they real active, so we're gonna <laughs> get into the conversation. So our first question is, who are you and what is your purpose for existing? So whoever want to go first, y'all could pick that. I could go first. <laughs> um, I believe this is a loaded question because there's just so much of me and it can't really be like confined into words. But to make it a short, you know, short story, I would say I'm a person that wants to better themselves and not only better myself, but I want to better my community because I feel like that is an extension of my, you know, myself. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah, because the environment is a factor in our lives. And so I really feel like I'm just a person that has the strive and the drive to better myself and not only just small attributes like self-care or learning things and skills. I want to be um, a person that motivates people too and see that our community is something that needs to be poured into. And so that's just that's me a person that just want to be better than i used to be <laughs> and can you tell them a little bit about you personally yeah. like what like how old are you what so you got i'm going on? i'm felissa dawson i'm 21 years old i'm currently a junior at uic i am currently studying sociology and a minor in psychology and i have high hopes to make austin better i could i consider myself an austin ambassador because i always find myself in many organizations across Austin. It's like I just be ping ponging everywhere. <laughs> but it's just like once you get in, you get hooked. It's like I work with um, Austin Coming Together. That's my first love. But right now I'm working with Project Exploration. And that's all about bringing STEM into the world, into younger people. But we also have a branch that's called um, the Austin Experience. And that's all about having events in Austin to bring our young people out and make them feel inclusive in their community. And so I just love actually extending myself in those areas. And so that's just me though. That's somebody that's been molded and in, in nurtured to see that my community needs that as well. So. Okay. I love it. 
I love that too. <laughs> um, so I'm Alicia Rogers. I'm a 16 year old youth from the Austin community. And I feel like I'm a person who's very loving and genuine. And that's how I can contribute to my community because these are also traits that we are missing. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like, what's the question? Let me see. <laughs> Who are you and what is your purpose for existing? My purpose for existing would be to have a positive impact on the people around me, not just on myself. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Because I noticed that there's a lack of that in our community and we need to just come together and just be positive towards each other and not mm -hmm. like letting a negative influence take over our youth. Yes. Okay, I, I like what y'all talking about. I like it, I like it, I like it. So as a leader of the Austin Youth Congress, what is it that you guys, like, what do your role consist of? Mm. Like, what is your role? Well, y'all the leaders, yeah. but what do y'all role consist of? Like, what do you guys do so they can get a better understanding of what's going on? And y'all could kind of explain what's going on at the Austin experience. Yeah, uh, of course. Um, well, I could go first with that. I am a safe space coordinator for um, the Austin Experience, so right now I just make sure everybody's like coherent in the group. I make sure the information is um, spread it out evenly to the participants, and I also do a budgeting. I also um, create like spreadsheets of our budgeting. I also um, participate in like workshops with the youth, and so we be in like Zoom calls trying to like help them with their mental health. We got this thing called Gen Z and it's all about um, us talking about mental health topics on Tuesdays from, um, what time? I think seven, we, we've been doing that. I've been doing that for two years. And so I just wear many hats because this is like, I feel like I could do it all. And so okay. and if you can do it, because yeah. we need more people like you for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but we need more. Like, like yeah, we were talking about the show, and it's like we definitely and we in mm -hmm. different areas. So I feel like with the bridge and each other together, I feel like we yes. definitely need to get that on um, rolling. What about you? Um, my role is also a youth leader, mm -hmm. okay. so I also help. You know, because I'm more into it with like the youth. Mm -hmm. The youth, yeah. So exactly. I'm a youth myself, so I understand what's missing in our community and I understand what the youth want. So because I'm in here with the youth mm -hmm. and I'm in that circle, I can understand what actually do we need to bring to our communities? What do we feel like we're missing? Mm -hmm. I can get those voices, those many voices, and not just yes. my own. I'm getting a whole crowd behind me, and I'm just like, okay, this is what we need. This is what we want to see, and this is how we feeling about the stuff that we're not mm -hmm. seeing because we don't really see anything. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll see. So the next question was basically, why are you guys so committed to helping young people? And we basically mm -hmm. done answered that <laughs> in so many words. Yeah. Um, and I feel like we all have the same mm -hmm. motive when it comes to helping young person. And I was so surprised to find out you were 16. Yeah. Because hearing you talk, <laughs> like, I would have never imagined. Like, you look young, but hearing mm -hmm. you talk, you have, like, a whole different... She a superstar. Yeah, like, yes. for real. You, I wouldn't have thought Thank you were 16 you. years Very old. Very mature. So that's definitely a compliment. Mm -hmm. So um, what does violence prevention mean to you? Um, I believe that violence prevention means treating us like the solution and not the problem mm -hmm. because we have so much of that in our community where we look at young people and be like well this is what the crowd of you are doing you're included in this crowd because of how you look and your age so I feel like violence prevention would be stop singling people out because that's mm -hmm. how you make people feel some type of way don't treat people like they're the problem because that's how people just like you don't understand what people go through at home you don't understand what they're missing so for you to just single them out you don't understand how that's adding to mm -hmm. the anger that they already have have yeah. going on okay. yeah um i dabble in restorative justice and so i really feel like there's many alternative ways to combat um violence in general because a lot of the time violence is just a a, a cry out that's been you know embedded deeply and so it finally came out in a negative way so i really feel like if we actually get to the root of the problems and actually create safe spaces for people to actually become vulnerable and transparent and feel united with somebody mm -hmm. before it results to violence it really just starts with the foundation and how we go about things i really feel like and so restorative justice and peace circles is one of them actually talking instead of resorting to that type of um you know results so but what if you have a child that's it's hard to talk to them 
We have. What, uh, how do you go about that? Because you have, you know, you had them mm-hmm. kids that their parents gonna make sure they in their program. Yeah. Their parents gonna make sure that. What if you had them kids that is it's a little bit like harder? Yeah. Because that I feel like as youth programs on the west side of Chicago, mm-hmm. that's one of the main things we deal with. Where we have young people with like. It's hard to get them in because they don't want to. They, for the most part, they don't want to be there. They don't want to listen to yeah. nobody. They don't. You know, they have their mindset on what they want to do. Exactly. What are you guys' opinions about them type of situations? I actually love that question Me because too. that's something that needs to be talked about more. How mm-hmm. some people actually force their mm-hmm. children to go to these programs, and, and the they children don't like don't it. Actually, they, they don't. They don't like it, and they don't realize how this can actually help them. Mm-hmm. My solution would be to try to crack the code. It's always mm-hmm. a code to it. Yeah. It's always a way to get that person to talk because you never know why they being quiet. Yeah. You never mm-hmm. know why they don't want to speak exactly. up. Exactly. You don't ever know. A lot of people have like emotional baggage and they tend to like hold that in you have to get to like the root of the problem i was saying like get to know a person see what they actually are engaged with because a lot of the times adults try to push their intelligence or push their ways and push their why i want you to be just like me exactly I want you to be the same but i'm me. not you i'm yeah. my own person i have my own dreams my own aspirations i'm me and you can't be mad at me because I don't want you to do that's it's funny because I was like that with my mom and she wanted me she wanted me to be a nurse and she was oh she was not adamant on it but she was kind of adamant on it like it was a little gaslighting here and there but I had to tell her like mom I love you and I know those your dreams but I have my own dreams I have my own aspirations and I found things molded to my dream and so it, if it's not that it might be something else okay so I definitely agree. Um, okay. What you said about the peace circles, I also agree with that because um, a lot of time in these peace circles, we always try to get directly mm-hmm. to the problem and never try to really get to know the person mm-hmm. because how you just come into somebody and ask them to pour all of their mm-hmm. problems out to them? Oh, and be like, why are you doing they don't this? Know yeah. you. Like, why are you doing like, this? Oh, I heard what your mom said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why, are you, why are you doing, doing this? this? You like, don't know me. You don't know you what didn't I'm You just say, what's my through. name? It gets the defense right. mechanism up. Yeah. Like, and you that's why their guard me. goes up. Yeah. yeah. All the time. I definitely agree yeah. because I'm kind of the same way. Like, I'm the type of person I don't really want to talk to strangers and especially when it comes to my personal issues, I don't really. But if I feel I done had quite a few people I done came across with it's like it's like they energy and I feel like like they say yeah. kids know yeah. you know when a person energy a person is truly there to try to be a help versus mm-hmm. a person that's just doing doing it for their job or a person so I feel like that plays a big part yeah. when it comes to I getting agree. these young people letting them know that you care and you know just being an open ear versus always having to be the person to talk Okay, the next question is, do you feel the West Side needs additional programs that are focused on violence prevention in and out of school? Yes. Do you have any programs like that in your school? Um, no, not really, but mm-hmm. I do have a program that allows, like, it's basically a peace circle. It's mm-hmm. called Working on Womanhood mm-hmm. While with the Youth Guidance, and it's specifically for the youth. So mm-hmm. that's more so of a peace circle, but it's not like violence violence per- prevention. Pre- prevention. But mm-hmm. you feel like, do you feel like it helps? Yes, it definitely mm-hmm. helps because it's like a coping. Like, I actually have a counselor who mm-hmm. has came with me out of, you know, sixth grade. I've been with her, like, through sixth grade to now and I'm a junior now so she's been there and supported me throughout my whole like really? growing up and it's like she's helped me so if I like if I ever felt any type of way then maybe she would help me mm-hmm. and try to get me away from the, whatever mindset I was in so that kid that could lead towards violence prevention but you mm-hmm. have to be they have to be told a certain thing yeah. for them to be like on that level with you mm-hmm. okay but we do need that we do need it outside of school because we see the attendance rate in these schools so maybe mm-hmm. these resources placed inside of school should be outside of the school as well yeah. like out after school experiences where these but what about kids that don't want to stay out of school the kids yeah, that actually have it, need it have it in the community right. have it in their face where they can't even they escape can't. it because uh-huh. it's really is I was how we you. got liquor stores on every corner. Exactly, it's your program. It's, it's your environment. Yeah, literally, <laughs> put one on every corner. Literally, it's your environment. Mold their environment. Put it so they can't avoid it. Because the reason we have so much violence, you just stay at the liquor stores. The mm-hmm. it's literally a liquor store right between a school and like an after school. Guess what? Program. You can get our adults to go in there and buy you some. Exactly, mm-hmm. and they so, can do it for that. Mm-hmm. How do you expect? Like it's getting to the root. 
literally the root is the environment it's embedded mm -hmm. and so when you have those violent prevention stuff not only in the school but outside in your face all the time you ain't gonna have no choice but to turn to but, uh, yeah and then when you see them doing positive stuff mm -hmm. having you know going out. on trips and, like it just be because <laughs> i feel like like with yeah. our program we came to a thing because okay we've been doing this for years years and years mm -hmm. and years and so we got to a point where we we have to sit down and figure out what is it we got to do to keep these kids engaged mm -hmm. Because we don't want to keep bringing kids around and we don't have nothing going on or they don't want to come back. And, you know, what do we have to do to get these kids involved? So, like, with the program we got going on right now, we got a program from ages 12 through 24. Mm -hmm. But we have young people. It's called Drop In. I'll drop my space Drop In. So we have young people come in between them ages where they can come in at any given time. But it's designated for two days where we actually have stuff set up. But they can come in at any given time as long as we're open. Mm -hmm. And you could have people to talk to if you need help with anything. If you just need the outlet you need to come use the computer like just an open outlet for young people and also we don't start to doing what we try to plan a trip every other week mm -hmm. so what we doing something with them because a lot of kids don't even get out of the mm -hmm. west side they like they don't have parents that take them on trips mm -hmm. so like we just recently took our kids to a white Sox game we took them last week we took them to the museum of science and industry mm -hmm. and you'll be surprised how many kids have never been to them type of places exactly and that's in their facility. And it's right in yeah. Chicago. So it's like you would be surprised with so many kids and the kids are, and that's the type of kids type of things kids are intrigued in. Mm -hmm. Being able to get out of their environment and do different things that they're not used to. And so I feel like no, violence prevention programs, I really feel like they need to get in schools. Yeah. I feel like outside of schools is good, but I feel like it need to I feel like it needs to start being what is in their curriculum. Yeah. You got a violence prevention class, so therefore you mm -hmm. can't not say you're exactly. going to do it. Exactly. So you it just know? goes down to how the school is set up because why aren't we li like learning things that's necessities? Like the program you said, I didn't know that existed. I would what love the um the programs, the drop in. Drop in. I didn't mm -hmm. know that existed. I would love to do something like that. It just really goes from like, I, I want to say like the advertisement and stuff. Like we not getting to the audience clear enough because like, that can be utilized. That's mm -hmm. something that's major, and I love that. That's beautiful. So and I that's why I was doing the conversation because yeah. you know, we just yes. connect I never bases. thought of it like exactly. that. Put it in the curriculum. I never thought of it like because that. Because what, what we learned in our Shakespeare folk, like, for real. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, because, like, when I was talking to my niece, I, she's a senior at Michelle mm -hmm. Clark, and like I said, I was talking to her about the same thing, but they starting to do stuff a little differently. Like, they starting to have it with, like, police officers are like, coming mm -hmm. out to the school, having Q&As with the students, mm -hmm. talking to the students about how they feel because of the, the distance mm -hmm. between police officers and young yeah. people. So it's I like, I feel like again. that type of stuff plays a part and mm -hmm. it makes it better when it comes to young people. So I feel like all the schools should start doing, at least if you don't go full force, start doing little stuff to show yeah, that y'all care about that. these kids. Like and that you're here and you're not doing nothing and exactly. just stay silent off to the side. Yeah. I love that. So I definitely agree. So the next question, oh, we time is just going for <laughs> Okay. So the next question is, what can we as a unit do to bridge both of our organizations together? Because um, we know y'all on the, yeah. in Austin, we on the West Garfield Park. What, like, just uh, shoot a text? Something, because, like, <laughs> um, I work with a lot of organizations, so it was me. I was, like, the middleman. I'm like, I work with this organization. Um, I work with this organization. Y'all do the same thing. Why can't we come together and have something, like, huge? So I was like, okay, I got this event going over here at um, PE. Okay, I'm working with Territory. I'm going to bring some of the youth from Territory, and we're going to have a good time over there mm -hmm. because we still in the same, same areas. Exactly. Yeah. So it really is just, like, a quick text or just having a meeting, getting on the phone, something. It's literally just the communication because it's an, it is a lot of resources in Chicago, in Austin specifically. People just don't know about it. Exactly. People don't know about it. And then, like, if we come the masses, when we come in numbers, this is going to be a big wave. So I really feel like we do need to really just – have a sit down talk have a peace circle something yeah, yeah. I definitely agree so we so that's something you guys could be looking forward to mm -hmm. y'all could uh, follow us on social media and stuff we are definitely going to do something where we could even if we mm -hmm. do a trip where we take both of us get some of our kids from both of our groups and take something. them I feel like that would be really nice yeah. Um. so the next question is what are some things we? I said that what are some things we could do to create positive social what we're going to do is we're going to actually tomorrow I'm going to get that information and we're going to mm -hmm. talk and we're yeah. going to actually plan something to bring both because what's y'all age range with y'all kids um i think 14 to 20 or 13 we start at teenagers yeah to like 24 yeah. okay so yeah so that's perfect we got around the same age mm -hmm. range okay so what do you guys feel is a big issue for young people on the west side 
Um, the visual the visualization. Mm-hmm. We are so separated for no reason. What separated as far as like the area? Yeah, like you so. know, you have Austin, you had Garfield, you have what Humble Park, you have oh you have all Rondale. these they're so segregated and we don't even know it. So a lot of the issues is a lot of people feel that, that that separation and they create conflicts because they feel like they're different, but at the same time we're the same. But it's, do you feel like it's it got something to do with all the gang violence? Thing. I really feel like a lot of people don't have nothing to do. I feel like they okay. don't they don't have they don't know that we have these programs. They don't know that we have all this stuff going on. And peer pressure. And peer pressure is another one too. But I'm gonna let our youth, you know, <laughs> yeah. get into that. We getting a little too. Yeah. Um. So, I feel like an issue is the segregation. Mm-hmm. So, like how we was just talking, how we want to bridge the gap in our community. Mm-hmm. The problem mm-hmm. is initially that we have a gap. Yeah. So we don't like. I, this is my first time hearing about the West Side community stakeholders. So we're on. We're on the West Side. Why don't we come together exactly. and create these big events like we just said, like the West Side Youth Empowerment Festival? We could have events like that all the time, where these kids like, oh, what's going on over here? Why we can't be over here? Let's come mm-hmm. over here and have fun instead of you know going out to do some things that we think are fun but not fun. Mm-hmm. And it's. By us later on. And I asked a whole, I'm sorry, I asked yes. a whole bunch of um, young kids the other day. I was like, what do you think are some social problems? And they say social media was one of them. Like, the having, yeah, <laughs> having that fast life all in your face is like, it makes you feel like you're not doing enough. And so having like, I feel like having real mentors and having real like stable people come into like these youth lives can be like, What's the word I want to say? Shocking, like a reality check. Because mm-hmm. we so engrossed in this phone. We so engrossed in this celebrity life. It's like we don't really have no real role models, especially the youth. Mm-hmm. We, they are mm-hmm. seeing this stuff. They don't have no real toys coming out. They don't have no real kids. Kids they don't come come toys out. Come Exactly. Out. They don't have nothing. Kids, like, and I can vouch for this. Because they don't have yeah. that. They don't have, they don't, they can't just be kids no more because they see this society going so fast. We didn't get so phones fast. till we was like, I didn't get a phone until I was like 10, 11. Exactly. These kids five, four years old have an iPhone. You had right. an iPhone at four? I had a, a Blackberry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like we didn't have phones, so we didn't have nothing else but to do to do but to go outside and play. Exactly. Okay, so I see we getting a little chunky with time. Yeah. So I wanna get I wanna um talk about a couple of events well, an event we have coming up. I told you guys about the uh, MySpace drop in program. So if you have any youth that you know would be interested in coming out for our program, they can contact me at 773-287-5821. We take all of you between ages 13 to 24, and if they in the Austin community, well, I'm going to let them speak on that in a moment. So, also, we have a annual Thanksgiving celebration that we have coming up and food drive. We will be accepting food between October 12th through November 14th uh, at Michelle Clark, 5101 West Harrison, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., and then we'll be having our event November 18th, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. And I see y'all whispering, so <laughs> that's something we're going to do again. <laughs> That's something we're going to do together, mm-hmm. but that's if y'all need any information regarding that, if you have people that want to come out and get free food for the holidays that can't afford it, you can contact us at 773-287-5821. And also, it's a donation mm-hmm. where you can bring out stuff if you have stuff that you want to give away to people between the dates of October 12th through November 14th. Do you guys have anything as far yeah, as... Yeah, we're trying to get our little script yeah. together. Okay. <laughs> so, we have an um, event at Columbus Park, I think I. October 28th? Yes, October 28th. Um, it's okay. called the Oktoberfest, mm-hmm. and it will be at the Columbus Park, Columbus Park Reservatory. Um, mm-hmm. It's going to have a hunted trail. Mm-hmm. We're going to have a whole bunch of vendors there to let Food. you guys know what's in the community. I, de- I got yeah. y'all email. I definitely yeah. got it. Okay. And we're going to, I think it's going to be a haunted house at the Columbus Park Refectory. Yeah. And it's going to be in the basement, so we're going to have a nice Halloween event yes, for the youth come to come out. out. Wait, a costume, costume contest, Yes, right? it's a costume contest. Um, you guys can get win a prize if you mm-hmm. have the best costume, so yes. come out. Get some candy, come out. Yeah, okay. it's going to be very fun. Yes. And if you guys are just now tuning in, my name is Vernisha Jones, and I'm the president of the West Garfield Park Youth Council, and this is... Alicia Rogers from Project Exploration. Mm, Felissa Dawson from Project Exploration. And if anybody want to contact you all, how can they contact you all? Uh, you can email me at Dawson at gmail.com. My name is ridiculous, so I'm going to spell it out real quick. P-H-I-L-L-I-S-S-A. And Dawson's pretty easy. So. <laughs> um, and my email is A-L-R-O-D-G-E-R-S-9 at gmail.com.
Okay, and I want to thank you all for being a guest tonight on my sh on oh, our show. Thank you so much. And um, thank you for having us. Yes. No, we appreciate no it. No problem. And next week we will have we will be having an entrepreneur um by the name of Harry Bill that will be on here. He's a young African American male on the west side of Chicago that's mm -hmm. doing a lot of big stuff. So thank you guys and see you guys next week. Yes.